Hello, welcome to PC Mag Live. I'm Dan Costa. He is Sasha Segan, and this is day two of CES 2014. In Las Vegas. In fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. We've got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about all of the top news of the day, including yesterday's announcement by Merce Mayer, Yahoo CEO, that they are going to launch some new channels. She's really, it's just really an extension of her continued revolution of Yahoo. She's done a pretty great job. They're up in, their stock is up, their users are up, and they're attracting a lot of talent. Well, I think it's interesting. I mean, she's making Yahoo, uh, she, she bought a bunch of things to make Yahoo more of a web services company. You know, they bought Tumblr, mm -hmm. all of that. Um, and now Helps to make she, them younger and right. more social. And now she's making them into a media company that seems uh, more targeted towards older users. They get the Tumblr for the younger users, mm -hmm. and then they get David Pogue, who's, uh, and, and some of their other writers who they hired for the Yahoo Tech and new Yahoo Food channels, who are really appealing to an older, less tech demographic. So this is Yahoo. They're still to some extent trying to be everything for everyone, but uh, they're being a little more methodical about how they're targeting each of these demographics. Yep, they just passed 400 million users and expect 3.8 billion mobile devices to be connected to the service. I just think it's interesting to see them pursuing what is in a lot of ways a very classic portal play. Remember when portals were going to take over the whole web? There was AOL, there was Yahoo, they were, they were going to do everything for you. Yahoo's actually delivering on that, and, and, and I think Marissa's has given them enough energy that they may actually uh, do some interesting things in 2014. Also in the news yesterday, the number that jumped right out at me, Kaz Harai, CEO of Sony, made a, his keynote address, and he's uh, let the world know that Sony has sold 4.2 million PlayStation 3s. In other words, more Playsta PlayStation 4s. PlayStation in 4s. other words, more PlayStation 4s than Microsoft has sold Xbox Ones, and that is, of course, the real message. Yeah, which makes sense, though. If you think about it, the Xbox One is $100 more. They sold about 3 million of those. So, you know, of course the PlayStation 3 is going to keep selling. PlayStation 4! PlayStation 4. Of course the PlayStation 4 is going to keep <laughs> selling. I have not gotten mine yet. That's why I'm so frustrated. But it's still selling out in stores. It's been out for weeks now, almost yep. months, and it is very hard to get one. And, and now, but they're still doing great volume. When we were reviewing the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, we were criticizing the PlayStation 4 a little for not being as much of a complete living room entertainment package as the Xbox One is. And some of Sony's announcements yesterday were addressing that. They were talking about, well, first of all, streaming game service. But what, inter what interested me more is that they're talking about a sort of streaming Sony TV channel service, where Sony, where Sony we know, is a content company and a delivery company. They're kind of trying to become their own Netflix using the PlayStation 4 as uh, as the entry to the living room. They've been doing pieces of this for years. They have a service called Video Unlimited. Mm -hmm. um, they have video on the PlayStation, but they're going to be much more aggressive with trying to make uh, the PlayStation 4 your living room entertainment hub. Yeah, and I think the thing that they need to do, they need to be careful about, and they want to take advantage of their hardware strengths and their, and their content. I don't think they should tie their content to their hardware. In the past, they've been Sony's been very, uh, in, very motivated to, and always made it part of the hardware package. You get this content on the side. This content solutions, their content channel should work on any device. Well, a great tragedy of Sony over the past decade has been the company's obsession with arcane forms of DRM. I don't know if you guys remember A Track, their yeah. proprietary music coding, and Sony just has to not let uh, the people in their content division kneecap the technology yeah. division with their obsession with DRM. They need to understand that it's a content streaming world, the streaming revolution. People don't own content the way they used to. They want to stream it, and they're willing to pay for and it. And they want to stream it to anything. And they're willing to pay for it if you give them that convenience. Yeah. Ownership is not what it used to be. The other thing Sony showed off yesterday was a 4K projector, which is pretty sweet. A, uh, 140, uh, it projects a 4K image up to 147 images. The key uh, here is that it's a short throw projector. Yeah. And what Sony was showing off is that it's basically, it, it creates those sort of sci-fi things where like your whole wall becomes a scene. And so you can like put it on your bed stand and your wall becomes a tropical island. And it's, it's just fun seeing these sci-fi concepts become reality, whether or not this will actually be affordable they, for normal it, humans. They, well, you know, they're, they're estimating 30 to $40,000. Yeah. But for a 147 inch TV, you couldn't get that for $130,000, for $30, so that's actually a pretty decent deal. Uh, also in the news, Intel is dropping the McAfee brand for its security products. It acquired McAfee a couple of years ago. It's been ongoing. They haven't made a lot of changes to it, but they're going to drop the McAfee brand. Yeah, the, the main they're going to keep the shield, so they'll still have that icon, yeah. but the uh, McAfee name is just not what it used yeah, to be. Yeah, I mean, the main reason is that basically the McAfee brand has become uh, heavily associated with uh, with uh, uh, hookers and blow, AK-47s, and a possible murder in Belize. Uh, John McAfee... Not great for your brand. Exactly. John McAfee, the founder of McAfee, uh, spun out these hilarious 
awesome but completely off-brand videos about his insane millionaire lifestyle and his conspiracy theories and the the crimes that he claims he does not he has not committed and the people who are pursuing him and you know it's a it's a distraction from the idea of your product yeah. as uh, we will keep you safe yeah something that will keep you safe like is this the guy who you want keeping you safe is he yeah. keeping himself safe yeah, it's uh, it, it, it's overdue, frankly. I mean, I don't think yeah. they didn't want to be too obvious about it, but I mean, it's it's long overdue. Another one of the great products at the show, and I have not seen this product yet. I'm going to check it out later on today. Is the sub $500 plug and play 3D printer by XYZ Printing. $500 out of the box, easy to use 3D printer. This is really what we've been waiting for. 3D printers have been a couple of grand. You could get a couple of cheaper ones, but they haven't been very great. Clearly, it's going to revolutionize the Yoda head industry. Everybody needs a Yoda head. Yeah. We print Yoda heads in PC Tiny Mag Labs. Tardises. Tiny Tardises. Tiny Tardises for everybody. Everyone deserves a Tardis and a Yoda head. There's a huge booming market for it. But $500, that's a pretty revolutionary price point. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, 3D printers are still basically toys. I mean, we're talking about our tiny TARDISes, we're talking about our Yoda heads, you know, yes, you can prototype jewelry with it, which, which I've seen people doing, um, but ultimately, these are still hobbyist toys that people are playing with, people are figuring out what to do with. $500 lowers, lowers the barrier. Maybe uh, people will be able to come up with the next great concept for 3D printers now that they can actually afford one. Finally, obviously, we're not at PC Mag Labs, so we can't pull things off the shelf there and show it to you. Fortunately, we have a whole show full of cool stuff that we can to take and show you. This is a, not an expensive device, but a very, very interesting one. This is the $99 Typo keyboard for iPhone. Uh, this is actually an iPhone case. You put your phone in it. Uh, but the keyboard is not a snap-on. It's a Bluetooth keyboard. There's a pass-through uh, for your lightning port. But uh, it's a hardware keyboard that attaches to your iPhone, connects through Bluetooth, gives your iPhone a hardware keyboard. But hey, look at this keyboard. Does it remind you of anything? Are these keys familiar to you at all? We read the, I read the story yesterday, and, 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 I started, and when you handed it to me, and I started playing with it, it is unbelievable how much this feels like a BlackBerry keyboard. Like literally, if, if you closed your eyes, you would not know you were not typing on a BlackBerry keyboard. So these and that guys, has caused some problems. These guys are currently getting their pants sued off by BlackBerry. And I spoke to the guys from Typo, and they say, of course, we developed our keyboard completely independently of BlackBerry. We've been working on it for two years. BlackBerry came out with the first uh, keyboard like this four years ago, by the way. Um, so they are going to defend themselves vigorously. But uh, yeah, it's true. Everybody loves the BlackBerry Bold keyboard. So attaching one to an iPhone is a no-brainer. You know, they should just reach a settlement with BlackBerry, everybody should get ahead with their lives, yes. and people who want a hardware keyboard can, you know, enjoy the nice little sculpting. It, it really is a brilliant product. I mean, I, I, the one thing I, I'm a little bit afraid of, I'm hoping that there isn't some kind of this, that the lawsuit doesn't prevent this from coming to the market. Exactly. Because it is a great product, and I think it's going to make a lot of people very, very happy. It's a nice case, too. And it's yeah. a nice case, too. Mm -hmm. So I hope it makes it to the market. Um, at the very least, it made it to PC Mag Live, so Absolutely. that's also a measure of success here at CES. That's PC Mag Live for today. We're going to be back tomorrow with an all-new live show. Of course, if you want to follow all of the CES news, just go to pcmag.com/ces. We'll see you there.